Okay, let's talk about adjustable LED lighting. So what I've got here is an LED strip that I cut to length connected to a microcontroller with three wires. And the microcontroller is in the shape of a USB key, which is convenient as it means any free USB port can be used for both power and to upload new animations or effects. I was expecting this to be a bit more complicated, but it turned out pretty simple and cost effective. You can make this for less than £5. I'll explain all the details, but first let me show you what I received from JLC 3DP. I showed this off last video, it's my case printed in their transparent resin and I was looking at it after the most recent changes, which has cleared most of the cables from this side of the case. And I can see that there's space for a 120mm fan here, which would certainly improve the airflow. I'll need to expand the ventilation slots to accommodate it, so it'll have to wait for a later video. But I wouldn't have noticed this without the transparent case, so thank you to JLC 3DP. It's a professional 3D printing service for those who don't own their own printer but want a 3D printed part. If you want something like this made, it costs about 100 quid, but you can get up to 70 bucks off with coupons. I've left a link in the description if you're interested. And with that said, let's get back to the matter at hand. So I originally thought you'd need to get a pre-made controller to do this, which I am not a fan of as they come with cheesy remotes want to connect to your Wi-Fi and do other things you don't want. But upon commencing research, I discovered that pretty much any Arduino style controller could be used for this, with plenty of online tutorials showing you how, and even whole code libraries dedicated to it. And I decided to use a USB key style controller, as it is pretty convenient for this application. I was originally going to use a microcontroller called the DigiSpark. It was originally launched on Kickstarter in 2015, but the Chinese flooded the market with cheap and unreliable copies of it, which can't be trusted. I ordered six and five of them died. It doesn't seem to have any kind of protection on the 5V circuit, while it also has a 12 to 5V step down converter, which doesn't really make any sense to me as you'd expect a USB key to be 5V only. So I switched to another controller called the Micro Beetle. It's a bit more expensive, but still quite affordable, and it has advantages, such as it starts up instantly, unlike the DigiSpark which takes forever. And it has an 80 mega 32 u 4 chip, which means you don't have to download any weird driver and can simply select Arduino Leonardo in the Arduino IDE software we're using to upload code to these things. Now the LED strip has WS2812B LEDs which have three connections. Two on the back for power and one on the front for the PWM signal we'll be making with our microcontroller. And this is an ultra narrow version which is only 2.7mm wide which is great because it can sit in the tray between the motherboard and the GPU in this little channel I created. It's set back a bit so the LEDs can be diffused through the plastic of the tray. I also made a little spot for this hidden power button as I'm trying to make more ventilation area on the motherboard side of the case. It's just a mouse clicker button. I managed to find a semi-transparent version that doesn't block the LEDs. You have to solder a power switch connector onto it. You can clip off the normally closed contact as you don't need it. And I like to put right angles on the wires and position them like this to get the wire pointing in the right direction. And I just cover these two contacts with a bit of heat shrink. Anyway, the strip is 175mm, 7 inches or 28 LEDs long which leaves little room at the top and the bottom of the channel, so the wire needs to be soldered at a right angle. You can pre-tin the wires to make them stiffer, to easily bend them into the correct position to attach to the LED strip. I did mine so that the two outer wires are power and ground, and the centre wire is the signal. You need to tin these tiny pads. This is a very delicate operation. 
I actually prefer a low power 8 watt battery soldering iron for this. With both parts tinned, it should be easy to solder. I add DuPont connectors to the other end of the wires so that it's easy to swap out the microcontroller should they ever go wrong. The two side wires go to the power and ground and the middle wire goes to any digital pin. I use pin number 9 so you may want to go with that. And now that that's assembled, let's learn to code. The first code example I found was Deco Lights by Marty North. You can just copy and paste it into the Arduino IDE software and change a few of these values to match up with your LED strip. As I mentioned, you just need to switch it to Arduino Leonardo. No messing about with drivers. But we do need to download a code library called NeoPixel. And you should get the fast LED library while you're here. And now you can simply upload the code. And this is what it looks like. It's pretty cool. It looks like there are three lights moving up and down. This alone beats most pre-programmed effects I see in LEDs, and it's much more professional than what I had previously. And here's what it looks like with the hidden power button, which shows off the LEDs better. I changed and moved the USB ports to improve the airflow even more. This is the new USB cable I'm using. I made a little sliding clip for it, similar to the power connectors clip. Anyway, we can upload other effects. So I looked through the examples to find the best ones, and I got the fast LED fire effect, which doesn't look great as it's rather flickery with garish colours, but I was able to modify it to make the colours and flickering more subtle. And now my case is on fire, but it ain't melting. Another effect I found is called Pacifica, which looks like ocean waves. It was looking a little dim on this 5V LED strip, so I've modified the colours to boost the brightness. It looks good in a blue case. These are the three effects that I'll include with the files. Deco lights, subtle fire, and boosted Pacifica. And that's pretty much it. A more advanced lighting solution that is also very simple. You can find a link to the latest files in the description. Check the text file for links to the items I've talked about in this video. If you want to see more, like and subscribe, and donate if you want to. Thank you for watching.